we need to go from philosophy to initiate to master, from knowledge to experience to wisdom, from mind to body to soul, from thinking to doing to being, and from learning with the head, applying with the hands, and knowing it by heart. This was kind of a wake-up call and it touched my heart very much because this is why Tantra is one of the most incredible systems I've found so far. Hey guys, welcome back. So I wanted to share with you that I've been struggling with something that is actually the new element I wanted to present to you. The very fabric of what Tantra is made of is direct experience that leads you to wisdom. I mean, it takes you exactly into this journey from knowledge to experience to wisdom from thinking to doing to being and this perfect coherence between mind and heart that scientists and many people are researching nowadays and discovering the benefits of it you cannot embody tantra by reading a book you embody tantra by experiencing the book in your daily life and eventually becoming the book in the beginning of this journey when I started to learn and practice Tantra and Yoga. I was, you know, curious and I was in this energy of the beginning, everything was new and I was genuinely wanting to know what would happen if I would practice. So every time I would have access to knowledge, to do certain techniques, to certain methods, to certain things, I was much more willing and much more disciplined even in putting them into practice. And then time passes, you know, when you get somehow familiar or you get a bit lazy or something and then you keep receiving theory but if you don't keep up with your practice to match that you will reach the point in which you will have a pile of theory which will be just a book and you feel you don't really embody that that you don't really you didn't experience it and you can also not say you know it Tantra is not a philosophy, let's make it clear. It's a science of life. It's very into practice, hands-on. And when you're not doing that work, it becomes extremely obvious. And the crisis I shared with you when I was in the cemetery, I feel it was very connected with this. It was kind of uh, life telling me, baby, look, <laughs> you know a lot of things. This has been super good, but go back to where you left the practice and keep up it's like uh, now you need to recuperate to get out of the mind and actually putting it to practice experiencing it and then to be able to through that move into a state of being of pure wisdom which is something that we are lacking so much nowadays at least from my perspective we are living in the era of information and not necessarily in the era of wisdom and there is a fundamental difference between them then sometimes we tend to forget and we tend to think that having access to a lot of information is going to make us just per se evolve on our spiritual evolution, on our self-development. I gave one step today. I moved from a to-do list to a list of success. To focus more on doing instead of just thinking about it. So every day at the end of the day, I can only write not what I remember I have to do, but what I actually did. That experience is a middle step necessary to master something. If you feel inspired to also start your list of success, I think it can be extremely helpful. Tomorrow there's more. And I hope you enjoy the interview with Olinella that I posted yesterday. It was the first uh, part of the interview I did. And I hope that from now on I can be posting more and more these interviews with other aspirants and students of Tantra and Yoga that I met worldwide so that it's not just me but that this channel also becomes a way for you to connect with both men and women that have been on this journey together with me in some way or at least that crossed my path at some point and that can also add more value and different types of perspectives and share different stories and experiences with you from now on so stay tuned for more